Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Mailbox Power Mastermind call. <laughs> Here, have some of this. <laughs> Where every single morning we get together and uh, lift each other as we climb. And this is a group for all of us. This is not the Brenda and Mike show. Um, we learn from all of you and, and it's about sharing ideas because some of the newest people in Mailbox Power have come from other areas and um, they've done things differently, which could help all of us. I think of the military and my military background and why they move people every three to four years. It's because you bring in a new set of ideas that helps you to innovate and move forward and to grow um, in the organization or in your business. So we always like to start with wins. So are there any wins for the week? <coughs> Lulu. I um, signed up a 90-day executive. What? Actually, he signed himself up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, even awesome. better. <laughs> and is that one yeah. of the ones you've been talking to? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yep. And he's partnering with another guy, and he's also going to sign up for the executive. And they're they're going to do some collaborating, um, and and do some cross marketing with their mailbox power accounts. So yay. Awesome. What industries? Uh, the guy that signed himself up is does painting, you know, uh, mm -hmm. interior painting for homes. And the guy that he's partnering with is a handyman. Oh, nice. And there, uh, I mean, there's a whole bunch of these guys that are in my BNI group that mm -hmm. all refer back and forth to each other. One is a does the um, the roof coatings and whatever. And all of those guys have said eventually they're all going to be um, working together and all using mailbox power. So the first one, I got the first one. Yeah. The dominoes started falling. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Anyone else? Alan. I don't have a sign up to report, but I can report that the last time you guys gave me insight into what to do with engaged realtors that I define as those that scan my QR code, I have accomplished what you guys instructed me to do. Which awesome. Was to, a, follow up the old fashioned way, left voicemails with the two of them that are in that group currently. Uh, second, created a card with a call to action to take them up on my offer of free service to do their first import and first automation should they act and establish an account by August 15. And I've got a reminder on Thursday to reach out again. So there's that. And then uh, on another topic, another business, back in July, I started with a company called Live Good. And I have, over the weekend, created my initial share card. And I'm starting to add people to that Live Good group. And I've also, at least in my mind, come up with my drip automation for postcards introducing each product that I am using and actually enjoying success with. So awesome. I feel like I'm on the tip of a wave and uh, should be seeing results through these efforts. Uh, thanks to your insights and encouragement. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Uh, we love hearing that. Uh, oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention is I had a fantastic hour and a quarter call with Brian Clark senior sales manager at um, Rocket Notes and saw stuff he was unable to show us in that original call back in July and was just reinforced that the 97 bucks a month is a freaking bargain, hands down. I can't afford to do it yourself, but if I could, and I sure as heck will encourage those that can, uh, to do it because the product does so much, so much. It'll even do billing for a professional like myself. So I don't need to subscribe to a, a time and billing product. 
Yep. Although I've supported Tom and Dawn products for lawyers for 35 plus years. So it's kind of hard to let that stuff go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that's a Anyway, I want those of you that are on the fence or thinking about CRM or using Google Suite without a huge amount of success or using a CRM that you haven't been able to integrate with, with uh, MVP, uh, I can assure you that they are going to be moving forward in lockstep, although they are separate companies because they, they need to be on the up and up in terms of mm -hmm. integration with other players. Um, but it is, and I know CRM, I've been on CRM product teams for Microsoft business partners. I've supported legal case management applications for a long time as well. Um, so I get it and I understand how failures occur. They appear to have a great onboarding process. There's a seven day trial, which gains you access to their onboarding document. And the way they work is they encourage you to work through that onboarding process and then have your one-on-one -on -one with their onboarder. You got to put some skin on the table is what they're trying to tell you. you know? mm -hmm. So I, I'm excited. And um, once I get my CRM implementation game plan down, I'm going for it. Simple as that. Awesome. Well, congratulations. And you have a good, a couple of good points there, Alan, whether it be, um, Rocket Note CRM or any other business tool that encompasses multiple pieces is looking at the value of it in what now can I let loose <laughs> of financially that is already included in um, that system. Um, and I know that looking at, because we've looked at other systems that combine lots, sort of like the Rocket CRM we had looked at previously. And it's like, by the time you add everything up um, and what you're spending all the other places, you're really not spending that much more. Or sometimes you're not spending more at all. So you each have to look at your own and what you are using and whether it makes sense. And I always go back to how many customers would it take new, because you already have your current base of customers, but how many new customers would it take to cover that cost monthly? And the yeah. beauty of Mailbox Power is at most of us, I don't think there's any newbies on since the change since we're all at a 40 percent commission that doesn't take very long to recoup the funds but you have to be committed to growing the business and going out and talk to people if you're not doing it on the other side of that equation if it saves you time and allows yep. you to promote across multiple channels uh, with a couple of mouse clicks um, and see on a contact form all the interaction, text message, social posting, emails on one page. Um, that, in my mind, is, is awesome. Unlimited websites, blogs, uh, AI integration. I could go on and on and on. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> no, that's a good point, too. This is the time is if you're currently spending several hours a week or an hour a day posting on social media or doing that type of stuff, what is your time worth? If you normally charge $100 an hour and it's going to save you three hours a week, you just made, I mean, $300 a week times four weeks it, it's well worth it. So you all have to look at your individual situations and decide. I know when it comes to mortgage and real estate and insurance and some of those, especially higher ticket, it it's a no brainer to use systems like that because it's going to save them so much time and and even if they don't do that stuff, it's their admin. It's saving a ton of time for their admin to now go out and do other marketing things. So great point. Thank you, Alan. Any other wins for the week? 
Well, I'll put a plug in for um, one of the birthday cards that Mailbox Power made right before the, the change over. I had, I had noticed and, and one of my affiliates had sent me that as her card for her particular business. And so it fit really great with one of my companies that I'm working with. And so I'm just thrilled that I was able to plug in all that and and just use the, the glossy cards and all. So I'm getting uh, probably about six different people in within that the company and, and new customers and uh, have gotten their cards from that. And then what was nice too, somebody that I, a new one that I enrolled had just had her birthday, of course, so she wasn't in in time to be on the automation. So it's just so nice to be able to click that button and do that. So I just appreciate streamlining a lot of things too. And uh, when I get a little bit bigger too, I will look into the CRM. So thanks for giving us all that info, Alan. Appreciate it. Yeah. And um, that's awesome, Terry. And, and it's about automations. We were at a conference this past week and whenever Mike and I shared what we do, it, there there was a group of us there was almost 40 of us there from Co from Colorado Springs and one of the ladies it was the last night not last night but the night before we were sitting there and the lady asked me and the the lady in my chapter beside me said oh but wait there's more but wait there's more and with the automation everybody was like what it, that's all automated yes so i think we uh, we take for granted what we have and we, we need to find ways to better present so that it's a no brainer when somebody looks at the system that needs what we have. Marie. So this was just a little pleasant thing that happened last week that we all already know, but it's always good to uh, to be reminded. I reached out to a young woman that I met probably nine or 10 years ago at a networking event. She had really, really impressed me. She was young, real entrepreneurial, had started her own business. Um, and I think I've probably physically, physically seen her on Zoom, <laughs> not physically. <laughs> I, 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 when I met her, it was face to face, but um, I think I've seen her once since then on Zoom. So anyway, I wanted to reach out to her and have a Zoom with her about totally something totally unrelated. And um, I called her, she returned my call and uh, she knew exactly who I was. And she, I said, I know we don't know each other very well, but I'd, I'd like to Zoom with you. I'd like to understand more about your business and you know how it's going, et cetera. And she said, sure, I'd love that. So when we got on Zoom, one of the first things she said was, you know, you said the other day on the phone that we don't know each other very well, but she said, I feel like I really do know you. She says, I get birthday cards from you. I get 4th of July cards from you. She said, I get emails from you. She said, I feel like I do know you. And I just thought, wow, yes, you should, because you've been hearing from me all these years. But um, yeah, so that was just a real fun reminder for all of us um, that what we send out really helps people to feel like they do know us. So I just thought I'd share that. No, I love that, Marie. And and I believe I heard you say like nine years you've known this woman. Um, and there are plenty of times when we approach somebody about what we do or we meet someone out networking and today is not the right day or this month is not the right month for them to implement what we have. And we teach all of our customers that we need to be in front of them seven to 12 times and that we need to be in front of them consistently Yet I constantly hear mailbox power folks that aren't willing to invest and be consistently in front of them. And when I say invest, it doesn't all have to be mailbox power cards. It's email. It's time just communicating with them. It's sending a text message. We are an amazing system, but we are not the end all be all. Um, and I truly believe that 
you need to incorporate all of the different modalities to reach out because some, everybody is a different personality type. Marie can talk to this. Some people are very much like things tangible in front of them based on their personality and others are, I'd rather get a text message or I'd rather get an email. Everybody consumes information differently. So when we combine everything, which Rocket Notes helps you do and have it all in one place, you have hit the trifecta or you've hit the jackpot in um, being able to reach out and communicate in a consistent manner. Um, so thanks for bringing that up, Marie, because I, I've had many people that have been in my it, CRM in mailbox power for years and years. And it, it might be four or five, six years down the road and they reach out and they become a client. I think the other thing that you said too, Marie, was the fact that you said uh, you may not, you probably don't know, know me, but they feel like they do. It, yes. And it's because of the communication. It's about uh, letting people know, not just selling to them, but just staying in touch and and being a friend or being somebody they can reach out to if they have any questions. Uh, it's about building those relationships. And I think we need to continue to understand that most businesses don't look at relationships as necessary in a business, but that's what we need to teach them. And, and I think if they look a little deeper, it is about the relationships they have with their customers. It is about the relationships they have with their vendors and with their employees. So uh, relationships are important in business and let's not forget that. Um, but again, Marie, uh, congratulations on that because I think it is important to, uh, to just maintain that contact. Yeah, and you hit on something that I, I wanted to bring out, Michael. I appreciate that. Um, I think too many people think about staying in touch with their customers and staying in touch with the people who could be their customers. This is all about, I mean, your network, net work is your net worth. Yes. And these, you stay in touch with people because you want to maintain the relationship. You never know when you might need something from them or they might need something from you that has is totally unrelated to mailbox power or anything else that you do. Um, you know, the best book, the book that influenced my life probably more than any other in 1989 was Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty by Harvey McKay. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, that's what life is about, collecting friends, collecting relationships. And you can't have relationships if you don't stay in touch with people. So... It's not all about buying from you now or in the future. It's about the relationship, the network. So it, and the, yeah. to tap into that, Marie, is you might need something from them, but they also might down the road know somebody that needs your services. And if you're not in front of them consistently and they think of you as somebody they know well, because you've right. been in touch with them, your name is never going to come up as a referral. Right. Again, it's about selling through people, not to people. And we learn that in B&I. And I know that's a hard lesson to learn because when you're first in business, you're trying to pay the bills. You're you're trying to pay, if even if it's the extra, the fun money, you're trying to pay for a family vacation, whatever it might be. And you're out there, in a way, chasing the sale. But if we concentrate on the relationship and being of value and a connector for them, it does come back to you. Maybe not today and maybe not tomorrow, but I can promise you we've been doing this long enough. And I truly <laughs> believe because we listen to the people like Vanessa and Steve and others that have been mentors of Mike and I, uh, that we now, we are now reaping the rewards. The seeds that we planted are now sprouting and it will happen for you too. Nanette. 
She's the, oh, there's yeah, here. I'm just not camera ready this morning. So you're not right. gonna, um, I wanted to share a uh, testimonial I got from one of my friends who is, owns a real estate company. And so I thought I would put that on and show you. Hey, Nanette, I just wanted to say thank you for sending me this card. This is very thoughtful of you. As you can see over my shoulder there, I'm going to put this on my door. Thanks again. I did have a great birthday. Awesome. Just kind of fun. Yeah. So the fact that Charles took the time to have somebody hold the camera for him, obviously, and make a recording was, was really cute. So Awesome. Well, we only have a few minutes left, so I want to get into some teaching. And I know Mike um, was trying to find some things early on in the call when we were, after we got the audio working. So um, I, I guess I'm, I'm curious, how many of you are actually using AI as part of your marketing or learning or uh, what other ways are you using AI in your business? I am Alan so I am I how okay. are you using it Alan I've used it for uh, projects um, essentially where uh, authorship or writing is involved and I ain't no writer <laughs> <laughs> but I can yep. sure copy and paste data into an engine that can spit out results and that will allow you to tell it to regenerate until you're happy and then you can copy and paste that into word and apply it to make it your own those Makes projects sense. range from difficult communication with siblings to uh nonprofit marketing efforts fundraising in particular uh to support my friend who's got the uh, a nonprofit for kids. So, awesome. And there's all sorts of business, you know, more more traditional business um, applications that I've used it for. Awesome, Stan. I, I use um, Chat GPT or Google Bard or Bing on a daily basis. Last week I did a five day challenge which was the vendor victory challenge and basically chat gpt wrote that whole challenge for me it created that whole thing but i spent i owned a martial arts business for 15 years and one of the ways i grew the martial arts business was through ven vendor booths mostly and then i worked for a national uh remodeling company where we sold millions of dollars of windows and doors through vendor booths. So I had that experience, but I leveraged chat GPT to come up with the outline, write the detail, write the, the VIP offer that I was going to use. And then I used rocket notes to actually create my VIP course. And, you know, I, so I've leveraged all of those kinds of tools to, to help me. And I use them on a daily basis. Awesome. I love it. And I love that you use it on a daily basis, because I think if we all start to use those tools on a daily basis, you are going to see a huge um, uptick in uh, credibility, in just visibility um, in the business. But I will caution, because I heard Alan talk about keep giving it prompts and you do want to keep refining and reiterating but you also once you get what you like you need to make it your own um we at the conference we were at this past week it is super critical that you reword it or retweak it and make it your own <laughs> because there are uh potential copyright so just beware because it's going out and um, AI is going out and finding other people's material and gathering it all together. And there are potential issues. Lots of people have been bringing it up with copywriting. So please, when you grab it, 
make it your own, tweak it into your own words, but this it's a whole heck of a lot easier to edit. At least for me, it's a lot easier to edit than to come up with the thoughts to begin with. I I have it, but I just can't get it on paper. It's a good starting point. And that really is the key. It's a great way to generate content. But again, like Brenda says, you need to make sure that you make it your own. Uh, Linda. Um, I was just going to say, I have a, a Noah gal who uses Mailbox Power in her Medicare business. She has written some books with AI. She is running next week. Uh, I, uh, and I don't remember. The, I think it's three days in a row, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at eight o'clock, uh, a three day AI challenge. And then after that, there's going to be a bonus time. She's not going to charge for the first three days. But if you, anybody has any interest in it, um, I'm trying to get her to do a to work with me since she knows mailbox power i i'd like to you know not spend a whole lot of time and and have her you know i'm willing to pay her a certain amount of money to just hone in on exactly what i want to do but if anybody's interested in maybe going to this class it's one hour from eight to nine uh pacific time monday tuesday and wednesday of next week uh, message me not on chat because i'm on my phone so uh, on Facebook, uh, message me. I'll send you the link. Uh, she's she knows it pretty well, and it might just get you started. And I'm not looking to write a book or do you know all of that stuff. I'm, you know, I'm also not a writer, but I would like some ideas to uh, for some of the things I want to do, kind of make it a little faster. So that's awesome. all I got. No, I love that, Linda, and I want to key in on something you said in. Mike and I never thought of ourselves as writers, and most of you know we wrote a book, and it was quite a challenge <laughs> mindset-wise, but a book increases your credibility greatly, and so, and there's lots of ways to do it um, fairly inexpensively, and to just do, even if it's a pamphlet, <laughs> that you have something that can say you're an author, Um. I didn't believe it when it was pitched to us, but um, so it, it's a good way to ha write those type of materials to give you the credibility. Suzanne. Hey, good morning. Well, I've used it. I use uh, Constant Contact came up with something called uh, Magic Text. And you go into documents and, and I use it more for... Um, looking things up rather than going to Google and then trying to figure out which link I should go to. I just, especially like when I'm looking for music or a certain type of music, I'll say, you know, list, you know, songs that have to do with love or list songs that have to do with this or whatever. And it's, it's wonderful. But I've also, I remember I used it one of the first times I was doing a birthday card for my nephew and he was 10. I put a cat on the front of it or something. And I just said, you know, what should I say in a card for a 10 year old with a cat on the front? And it came up with the cutest lines. I mean, it was adorable. And, and I thought, oh, that this is too good. But um, I did also use it the other day. I'm, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, an administrator for a Facebook group. And, you know, they say you should have some rules for your group. So I just went in there and I said, you know, list, you know, what are the rules for Facebook? And they just listed them like five different things, you know, and I thought, hey, that's perfect. <laughs> so, but <laughs> I love but it. I use it. Yeah, but I use it more for um, research than I do for actual writing. You know, um, I had I did have it um, modify something that I'd written one time just to see what it would do. And it was it was pretty good and it was kind of catchy and all that kind of stuff. So uh, anyway, but um, I'm just really thrilled. And when I when Constant Contact came out with that, I thought, oh, this is cool. This is too cool. You know, <laughs> everything is right there. Yep. It, it, most systems now have some type of an AI component or they're they're all going that way. Um, so thanks for sharing, Lulu. So I use it in all the ways that everybody else has described, but I also use it Sometimes I'm trying to say something and I don't want it to sound like everybody else. And so I'll say something like, um, you know, what, 
I, I use it to elevate my language and my my words, my text, what I, whatever it is I'm trying to say. And so I'll ask it to, you know, give me 10 different ways to say this phrase. And um, I've gotten some really great responses that way. So you don't sound like everybody else. So yeah. that's been helpful. Awesome. Linda, did you have another? No, I just forgot to put my hand down. Oh, no, you're off, you're fine. Um, Suzanne, I liked one of the things you said, and I haven't thought of using it that way in writing a message to a 10-year-old or writing a message to a real estate agent or a mortgage. So the, see, you just opened up my eyes to another way to use it, which I had never thought of. And uh, at the conference we were at, somebody used chat GPT, um, an AI to write lyrics to a song. So I know you happen to be a singer and yeah. musician. So that might be another way to explore using yeah. chat GPT well, for you. Also, uh, Brenda, I don't know if you remember or not, but this was several months ago when AI first started You know, out. We were doing something at church, the theme at church. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I went in there and I said, write a poem about such and such. And it was absolutely beautiful to the point that the minister actually read it on Sunday morning. Wow. I mean, I mean, it was, it was really very, very well done. Yeah. Awesome. Well, any, anything else? Anything else? I, I would just <laughs> say there are so many, I'll, I'll get to you, Terry. There are so many tools out there and AI is one of them. And we got a whole list from the conference last week of tools that I hadn't even heard of that are AI. Um, I've heard of a lot of them, but there were some other ones that we're gonna do some investigating and play with. And if we think they're worthy of, you know, this group and, and what we do, we'll share those with you in future weeks. So if anybody finds a tool, whether it's a AI tool or something else, that they are finding really helps them in their mailbox power business, this call is the place to share those. So please let us know. If you let us know ahead of time, we may be able to even just plan you to be the facilitator for that week. Terry, you were gonna say something. Well, I just have a, um, if I can ask a stupid question. <laughs> There are no uh, stupid questions. Because, right, because the chat GPT came out and then everybody's saying AI. And it's like, if you just say, and it's so you, re, if you, somebody says now AI, aren't you just referring to all of it? Or are you referring to, I thought for a couple of weeks, everybody's referring to just the chat, the new chat. A, nope. AI but, is artificial intelligence and there are, hundreds, probably more than hundreds of tools out there um, that tap into using artificial intelligence, chat GPT. It's funny I that do. you say that because I think at the conference she got up and said, so everybody thinks of chat GPT as AI. Chat GPT. Right. Yeah. So they did a good tool. marketing uh, ploy on that because we, I mean, like I've been using, looking up things for MVP cards and all forever. So so I have been using it. It's like, I thought, well, maybe you mean something else, you know, and then everybody's comments have answered that too. So I appreciate yeah. that. But yeah. I also thought, is this, you know, when we're talking to people, if you say that you don't want to sound like you're using all, I'm using only these things, or this is a big thing. I mean, it's kind of like we've been in this space for so long, most of us that we've already been, you know, yeah. Oh, I, I guess I, it's, I may it's be perfected. wrong, but, but I think Chad GPT is actually the engine that runs everything. Uh, I know the first time I saw anything related to AI was in Canva, where they had this uh, text writing tool that you could actually use in Canva. But I think Chat GPT is pretty much the engine. And I like I say, I'm not well versed in AI, but I think that's where everything started with, with Chat GPT. Marie. Well, that's what I was going to ask is the um, uh, the thing that we've discussed about Canva before 
a version of chat GPT. That that would be what I would think. I think I think some of the stuff they incorporated into Canva is actually a part of a an AI engine. And I think chat GPT is actually that engine. I, I'm not exactly sure. You know, some can of I, yeah, can go I ahead comment and on that? No. Uh -huh. The so um chat GPT made AI usable by the general public. AI has been there for a really long time. A lot of different versions of AI has all been out there for a really long time. But ChatGPT came out and all of a sudden it's wow, everybody started using it. Canva did, they used what's called Magic Write, I think. They mm -hmm. that Magic Write was based on the ChatGPT engine. And lots of other companies came out and used the chat GPT engine to do some of theirs. But but if you actually go and you start looking, there's a whole bunch of different AI platforms that are out there. What chat GPT did is it upped the game. It made everybody else that was working on AI up their game and start introducing their platforms sooner and some of them started introducing them sooner than they were really ready to, but but ChatGPT fueled that fire to make that happen. So there's a bunch of different AI engines that are out there. ChatGPT just happens to be the most popular that everybody's familiar with. And it's the one that has an API that lots of companies are now buying and tapping into that API yeah. so that they can use it to run their systems off of. Yep. Does that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. yep. First yeah. to the market in a usable yes. format. And now everybody wants what they have. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yep. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank sure. you. Alan, FYI, if you said you're going to play with a video editor. If it's not um Descript, which is a link that we put in the chat, I strongly suggest you look at that if you haven't already paid for another one, because it is phenomenal. Mary. Good morning. I just wanted to jump in real quick and just say thanks to everybody putting this information together today because I have been completely out of touch over the summer, just taking care of family and um, just making sure the kids and I survived. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I'm I'm jumping back into my mailbox power business, and this has been very helpful today. I really appreciate everyone sharing everything and kind of getting my brain like, okay, back to business. We got to do this. So I really <laughs> appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for being on. And with that, I think that's a good wrap up for the call because we're a little over. Hi, Josh. Did you want to say something real quick or just? No, just waving good night to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I hope you all have an awesome week. And again, if you have tools um, that you've found that make things easier in your business, especially when it comes to mailbox power, please reach out to Mike and I. We would love to have you um, kind of facilitate a call and share your expertise and your knowledge with us. But with that, we hope you have an awesome week and we'll see you next Monday, everyone.